So I've been working on tearing down this Ford Flathead V8 and I've come to the point where the motor is almost completely torn apart except for these head studs. And so it's come time to take these out so that way I'm down to the bare block. Now, these head studs have been in here for a long while and they are pretty much seized into the block. Um, I've tried the double nut technique and they're not really coming loose. So now my option is to add heat and I could go grab the torch or I could use kind of a specialty tool that I've got right here in my induction heater. And so what this will do is instead of having an open flame and generate a lot of heat, or use a lot of gas, it'll just generate a lot of heat right around the stud, heat up the stud. Um, so hopefully I can go and just back it out using the double nut technique. So I'm gonna get this all set up and then we'll try removing the studs. So first things first, I have the induction heater set up. Um, it includes the big uh, apparatus, these two little tabs that hold in this coil, and this coil of copper wire wrapped in the sheathing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip it on and heat up the uh, stud here, and then slip it off, slip the wrench on, and try popping the stud out. Um... These studs are pretty well in here. Sometimes it takes two or three cycles of heat and letting it cool down to take it off. But I'm going to plug it in now. Uh, when I do, there's a fan that starts running and it gets hard to hear. So I've got the machine plugged in now. I'm going to slip this over and press the button. Generally, I hold it until I see red on the stud. So I'm seeing the stud turn color. I'm going to set that off to the side. Slip my wrench on, give it just a little tighten. And try popping her off. And my first failure. Um, that's the first time I've had one break. So that's one hole that I will need to drill and tap. But now it's on to number two. So this time I'm going to heat it up, let it get red hot. Let it cool down, heat it up, see if doing that right off the bat works a little bit better. So 
So that got my, nice and hot. I'm gonna let it cool down for a couple seconds and then I'm gonna put the heat back on it. See if it doesn't help loosen up this stud. And a third time for good luck. So I don't feel that one budging. But it's going in. So let's see if we can pop it back out now. Ah. Be careful, the stud's hot. That's why I'm wearing gloves, but I still accidentally caught it. Okay, so there's stud number one taken out using the heat. So now I'm going to go and try a second stud, see if I can get this one to come off. So the way the induction heater is working is it's heating up the stud and letting it cool down, lets it expand and contract, expand and contract, and hopefully it's loosening up the rust that's inside of the uh, block that's holding this these studs in. 
but I'm going to go ahead and set up a time lapse now and try removing the rest of these. Um, hopefully we don't have the break off of the first one, but I mean, that's not a big deal. I can weld the nut onto that and try breaking it out that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you just how easy this induction heater can make this job because I don't have a big flame that's shooting everywhere and potentially setting all the grease that's on this block on fire. It's a very localized heat. The only thing you do want to watch out is the stuff does get very hot, very hot. And if you accidentally hit it, you can burn yourself. So I got through um, all the studs that I was planning on doing. I've got to go and take the nuts off of these studs now by putting them in a vise and taking them off individually. So that's something that I'm gonna go ahead and do off camera. But as you can see, it did a pretty good job. I did end up breaking two of the studs, but it is what it is. I mean, this is a pre-war block so i mean these things have been in there probably for the better part of 80 years if not longer and so yeah that is my induction heater um it's really nice to use especially inside the garage when you don't have somebody else with you to be holding the torch and controlling the flame um, it's operation is really simple. Like I said, you just have your coil here. These two screws that hold it in place, you plug it in and you press the button. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all the rest of the studs on this flathead and I'll see you next time.